This conference will now be recorded. All right. So welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to this session. My name is Soumya and I'll be your host for this session. So uh, before we start with the session, let me introduce you to Tech Canvas. So Tech Canvas is an IT certifications training organization for professionals, wherein we help students to crack their certification exams and first attempt. We are IIBA authorized and PMI authorized. So we provide all the certification trainings for IIBA courses and uh, project management related. And uh, so, yeah, today's session is very interesting. It is for all the aspirants who are looking to uh, crack CBAP exam. So we'll tell you some tips to how to how, how you can prepare for CBAP exam. And we have with us Shashank who is a CBAP certified senior consultant with 14 plus years of experience in business analysis, product owners, scrum master, consulting and project management roles. So uh, I would request Sashank to take the session ahead. Thank you everyone for joining and thank you Sashank. Thank you so much for the introduction. Welcome everyone. I hope you can hear me very clearly and can see my screen as well, quite well. All right, so thank you for the introduction already. Just to add a few more points, yes. I do mentor aspiring business analysts as well in terms of the certifications from IIBA Canada and one of the gold standard certification is CPAP. I see a lot of participants have already joined and uh, let me share some of the strategies that you can use for your preparation for the CBAP examination. I hope most of you would be quite aware that uh, what the CBAP is, it is Certified Business Analysis Professional Certification. It comes from IIBA Canada. There are other certifications as well, which are offered by IIBA Canada for business analysis, and they are CCBA and ECBA. CBAP is for the folks who have around five to eight years plus experience already having uh, roles like maybe mid-level senior business analyst or senior business analyst and those who want to go for this certification because this certification is well recognized across the globe. The certification that comes from IABA Canada. It is well known across different industries and mostly across the IT industries as well. So I'm not saying that it is only for the folks who are into IT industry. It, it is applicable for business analysts who are working into non-tech industry as well and those who want to learn the best practices about the business analysis. So that is the introduction about this certification. The agenda for today's session is we will understand that how to approach the BABOK version three. BABOK, the full form for us is business analysis, body of knowledge. And the current version is version three. How to read that book? Because that book is quite, quite uh, long in terms of the content it has. It has around 500 plus pages and there needs to be a strategy that you need to approach. Next, I will be covering around 10 strategies for the preparation for the certified business analysis professional certification. After that, we'll talk about what are the do's and don'ts for the examination. I will also cover the exam question types as well, and that I'll be taking up from Tech Canvas exam series. It has more than 1000 questions across scenario based questions are there. There are case study based questions and there are numerical questions as well in the question bank. So we'll look into some of those questions as well. And lastly, we'll have around five to 10 minutes for the Q&A. All right, so let's start with the first thing, which is where I say how to approach this book. How to approach this entire content, which is there in this uh, 
I would say framework rather than a book. And it is a guide to business analysis. And there are six knowledge areas in this uh, framework, which are like if I talk about the order, which is there in the book, and that is first one is business analysis, planning and monitoring. Second knowledge area is elicitation and collaboration. Third one is requirement lifecycle management. Then comes strategy analysis. Fifth knowledge area in the framework is requirement analysis and design definition. And lastly, there is solution evaluation. So basically, this is the order which is there in the book. And one of the approach that can be taken is to start first with strategy analysis. However, in the book, if we look at the order, we may find that uh, it comes after requirement analysis and design definition. However, one of the recommended approach to do the ordering and learning of the knowledge area, one of the recommendation is to start with the strategy analysis. So let's understand first what business analysts do, right? Business analysts understand the problems and needs which are faced by the enterprises and then business analysts recommend the solutions. Business analysts have to understand the business requirements, stakeholder requirements, and then they work upon the solution requirement. So what we see is that in general, any initiative or any project starts with someone who thinks about what should be the strategy for any initiative. And that's the reason the recommendation is to start first with strategy analysis. Uh, those who have some idea about knowledge areas, every knowledge area has some tasks. Overall, there are six knowledge areas. Within those six knowledge areas, there are 30 tasks. Apart from knowledge areas, Babok version 3 also has a chapter dedicated for the techniques. There are 50 techniques in Babok version 3. What we find is that in all of the knowledge areas, to perform the tasks within those knowledge areas, it is required to learn about the techniques and apply them. And that's where we see that when we start first with strategy analysis and the key tasks which are there in this knowledge area, strategy analysis are assessing the current state. So you can visualize that this is the starting point. Let's take an example. Let's say, taking an example that an aviation company who already have a web-based application and they want to build a mobile application. So what we see here, very first, there needs to be a strategy. There needs to be a business value. Why any organization is also having another platform where they already have a platform, like in this example, which I'm sharing is about, they already have a web-based system and now they also want to have a mobile based application. So what happens here? We start first as a business analyst, we start first with strategy analysis, where we understand what is the current state of the enterprise. And we also define the future state. So for this organization, the future state is like, they want to move on to a mobile based application. When we move from current state to future state, it is a possibility that there could be some risks. As a business analyst, a BA has to assess the risk and define the change strategy. So what we see here, we started first with this knowledge area, which is strategy analysis. And if we take some example of any initiative, this is how it starts, right? And that's the reason I recommend that we first start first, you should start first with strategy analysis. And then let's assume that all this work has been done by a business analyst in terms of supporting this enterprise by helping them assessing what's their current state, where they aspire to be, or say what the future state for them is, any risk from moving from current state to future state and having the change strategy, take in consideration that this enterprise, which is aviation company is good to go with implementation or say execution of this product, which can be a mobile based application. And after that, the business analyst role starts 
in terms of the planning in terms of doing a lot of elicitation which is about gathering the requirements from different sources then ba's role is to write the requirements they analyze the requirements and once the solution is built then do the solution evaluation so hence the order of the knowledge area the method to approach babo version 3 first step as i say is ordering the knowledge areas and reading them in a way starting with strategy analysis once the project starts what ba is to they analyze that what all business analysis efforts will be required in any initiative uh, which all stakeholders they would need to meet and what would be their governance approach that would be followed across the initiative business analysis approach can be agile it can be a waterfall as well uh, the the terminology which is used in babock is about adaptive and predictive and it is also about this second knowledge area which is business analysis planning and monitoring in this bas to business analysis approach finalizing stakeholder engagement um, deciding that how would be the governance that should be followed then how the information management approach would be there and uh, also looking at the areas that how business analysis could be improved so one thing is that don't just think that it is sequential knowledge areas which happen across every initiative sometimes business analyst may find that they may get opportunity to work on some of the knowledge areas more and other knowledge areas less but as a ba from the babak version 3 framework we need to understand that how is the sequence of the activities and then the next knowledge area that should be approached should be elicitation and collaboration then requirement life cycle management then do writing specifying and modeling the requirements is all about the knowledge area called requirement analysis and design definition and once the solution is built then the ba is to solution evaluation so that is the order that is recommended uh in case if you have any question you can leave your questions into the comment box and i can take them all together then um the second approach is to understand the sequential tasks it's important for the aspirants to understand that what are the tasks i like i said there are 30 tasks in the framework in across six knowledge areas and when we look at one of the knowledge areas say elicitation and collaboration there are five tasks into it and uh, they are first one is prepare for elicitation then second one is conduct elicitation third one is confirm elicitation result so what we see here there is a sequence in the task that first preparation happens after that a business analyst conduct the elicitation and third step being getting the confirmation on the elicitation results so that's where we see that wherever there are possibility for a sequence that is where bas or the applicants who are preparing for this certification should understand that what is the sequence so that's the second method third one is learn across the uh, common themes across the knowledge areas so if we talk about business analysis planning and monitoring which is one of the knowledge area in this there are four tasks which are which says first one is plan business analysis approach second is plan stakeholder engagement third one is plan business analysis governance fourth one is plan information management so what we see here there is a theme which is which which focuses on planning part and this knowledge area also says business analysis planning and monitoring so because if if anyone goes in a in a straight forward way how this page by page it will be really difficult to understand and that's the reason there are these are the approaches that can be followed another method is always look at the real time application think about whenever you are reading any knowledge area see if you have already applied those learnings in any of the initiative you can also think about in your current projects or products as well that if you are really using all these tasks are you using the techniques are you using the elements which are 
mentioned in the knowledge area and as a business analyst you may be sometimes working on elicitation sometimes you will be working on business analysis planning um a lot of time is dedicated for the requirement administration as well a uh, lot of time also goes in writing the requirement or working with the technical team in terms of uh, defining the design options or giving a recommendation that which solution has to be used so baba covers all of these aspects of business analysis in the form of the knowledge areas and the tasks within them so there is nothing as such you would find that as a business analyst you may be doing into your uh, real time work and you are not able to associate it with what is mentioned into babo because this framework is like reviewed by more than 50 60 authors it doesn't come from a single author or two or three authors it is a a learning which has been on which like a lot of people agreed upon and who have came with a lot of years of experience who would have come from different industries different number of years of experiences domains so we see that that when we go through babok it works for every industry no matter what if it is technical or if it is non tech so these are the four methods to approach babok version 3 definitely uh, taking the support from any uh, education and those provider helps or in the simple terms to take a training from someone who is already certified business analysis professional or who has a lot of experience in terms of babok is really helpful so these are the methods to approach babok version 3 now let's look into the strategies that can be followed for cbap preparation so the first strategy is understand the body of knowledge or say babo understand that how it is structured how many knowledge areas are there which tasks are there into it then uh, what are the techniques that can be used to perform uh, any task what are the techniques that can be used across a task which is all stakeholders that can be helpful while working on any task and also go through the right version the active version right now is version 3 so that is one of the strategy understand it better one more thing all of the knowledge areas in the babok somehow connect with each other so like i said that there are 30 tasks into this uh, into this framework and what we find is that uh, so just so that you understand what is task task is something which business analysts perform or in layman terms say one of the task in elicitation and collaboration knowledge area is prepare for elicitation right second one is conduct elicitation third one is confirm elicitation result so all of these tasks are connected to each other because they would take the output from the previous task and that becomes an input here and not just within the knowledge area we often find that some of the knowledge area tasks will be taking input from the output of the other knowledge areas as well so that is also observed for example in requirement analysis and design definition first task there is specify and model the requirement in layman terms it means writing the requirements how do we write the requirements that can be in the form of business requirement documents it can be functional specs it can be use cases and many artifacts are used across different organizations it can be user stories as well so first task in this knowledge area is specify and model the requirement so for this first task to work on this first task the inputs required are from elicitation and collaboration knowledge area as well which are elicitation results in confirmed or unconfirmed state and these two outputs are basically the output of second and third task of 
elicitation and collaboration knowledge area. So what we see here, we see that now different knowledge areas are connected with each other as well. So you should not study these knowledge areas in like like in separation like okay i have done the one knowledge area i have done two knowledge areas okay let me work on the third one but it's not like that in ABA. all of these knowledge areas are connected with each other because they would take some of the inputs from the other knowledge areas so that's first strategy second strategy uh, which is always recommended because going through babak uh, yourself just without any guidance can be really difficult and uh, that's why there are eeps uh, tech canvas is one of the eep education and those provider who go through all the formal uh, requirements they meet from iiba canada get the badge that now you are uh, certified or you are good to provide the training so one of this another strategy is to attend the cbap training from eep to pass the cbap exam because the trainers that you get at the these eeps are also cbap certified they already would have uh, trained lots of aspirants would have definitely gone through baba numbers of times would have also uh, seen different kind of uh, situation based questions and that's how EEPs are really helpful when it comes to passing the CBAP exam and taking the training from them. Next strategy is creating a study plan is also helpful because when a study plan is in place, then the, then one get disciplined as well. You prepare a study plan, which is like, okay, it can be in the form like, following the strategy in terms of going through the knowledge areas, which is like covering first the strategy analysis, understanding what, what all tasks set. after that covering the next knowledge area. And in your study plan, uh, one of the recommendation is that you should go through the Babok version three at least two to three times, not just from mugging up point of view, but because when you read it two or three times, then you start making the connections like i gave an example right that knowledge areas are connected with each other because they take input from another task in the first read one may not be able to connect all these dots when you read it second time third time then you start forming the connection from one knowledge area to the another knowledge area and that's why it is recommended to create a study plan and follow it Generally, uh, an average uh, time that CBAP applicants take in terms of preparation can be in the range of two months to six months. Some may clear it in two months as well. Some may take more time. And because most of the folks are already professionals who already work in some of the organization, and that's why having this time management plays a key role in terms of following a study plan study sticking to a plan and it also requires to understand baba quite well many tasks are there a lot of techniques are also there there are other chapters as well in the baba which is like underlying competencies there is a chapter for key concepts and terms as well and like i said all of this connects with each other and that's why it's important to have the sound understanding of the entire course and that's why my study plan is really helpful next is read the babok familiarize yourself with it fully understand well what are the knowledge areas what are the tasks into it what is the purpose of each of the knowledge area and every task has like where we when you go through all of these tasks there are eight things in every task every task has its purpose that why why it is there in the knowledge area uh, you get a good amount of description as well then to perform every task there are inputs required and that is also important to understand what are the inputs to work on any task inputs means something 
that without which you cannot work on those tasks and you need those inputs to work to start your work so and uh, so that is one thing understanding what are the elements because a lot of questions that come into cvap also they frame the questions from the element section into the task because they are quite content heavy some of the experience may tend to skip some of the part and that is another thing that you should not skip any any content any line which is there in the book every line has its meaning it has its context and that's the reason it is there in the book as well then understanding what are the guidelines and tools then uh, what are the techniques that can be followed to perform on a task which stakeholders you can consult with because as a business analyst you need to know when you are working on a task which stakeholders you can take support from who should you who you should reach out to and then every task has the outputs as well so that is the thing that uh, that whenever you are reading any of the task understand these things well you can make your own notes as well because that helps in preparation okay next strategy is don't just memorize focus on understanding the facts and the relationships among every task and technique in the babok so don't just memorize don't think that you just need to mug up entire book more important is understanding that how all these facts are there how they are connected with each other then here is another slide so that you can understand that which knowledge area has how much weightage how many percentage of or the percentage of questions that can come from each of the knowledge area so like i explained that there are six knowledge areas and from those knowledge area there are number of questions that are there and we see that from business analysis planning and monitoring there are 17 questions that they frame which is 14% of entire questions elicitation and collaboration there are 14 questions and the percentage of questions is 12 percentage weightage and what we see is that most of it is with the requirement analysis and design definition so michael you have a question as well that what is the pass mark and what scores should one be having in uh, like 120 question to consider ready for the exam okay so your question is like in terms of simulation so when it comes to simulation and i think you are talking about a question bank where you are doing the preparation and when a uh, applicant feel like that they are quite confident to go for the exam in terms of simulation i would say definitely you should aim for 90 to 95% sometimes you may be answering some of the questions incorrectly so you should always look at what is the explanation behind it and then keep doing it again and again until you reach like 95% plus a score so that's from simulation and i think michael is talking uh, in the chat to itself it's from the point of view where he might be looking at uh, the question bank and there are simulation questions as well in the exam series so there i would recommend that get around 90 to 95% be confident about it however in your real exam the passing mark is 70% and it's not only out of 120 questions you need to have, get 70% mark it's also across each of the knowledge areas as well you should get 70% to clear the examination so it might uh, happen for some of the applicants that they might do well in five out of the six knowledge area and may not do well in one of the knowledge area so then also they may not be able to clear this examination that's why in each of the knowledge area you need to get the 70% and across uh, entire exam as well so that's where we can understand that what is the weightage as well across the knowledge areas another tip is do a lot of practice it's quite important to um, practice in terms of understanding the framework in terms of understanding 
how the book is organized not just understanding the book more important thing here is understanding the exam questions as well and that's where you can like refer to the exam series as well one of the exam series from tech canvas is also there where there are a lot of questions which are pretty much up to a standard which which comes like in real exam as well so yeah there are a lot of hard questions as well difficult questions because cbap is a difficult one it's not like a straightforward one where you just get uh memory based questions or fact based questions in cbap you get uh, the questions which are uh, situation based where they want to understand from the applicant that how well they have understood the babok framework the thing is they want to test you on how good is your understanding on babok how well you have understood what babok is recommending when it comes to uh, do these or solve these questions all right uh, i have a question as well on chat can you please explain how to tackle the scenario based questions all right so some of the tips to tackle the scenario based question is definitely when a scenario comes uh, these scenario based questions may be combination of multiple knowledge areas and uh, finally there would be a question out of it so scenario based questions want to test from the applicants so different scenarios could be there that in a kind of a situation what you would do so the thing here is that you should not answer it based on your previous judgments that is one thing where when someone tries to think that oh i already have a lot of experience as a business analyst and i already have faced these kind of situations and i think i would have taken this step and that is where one may tend to answer it incorrectly whenever a scenario based question comes you should start thinking that from which knowledge area it belongs to first of all it might happen that it may be covering multiple knowledge areas as well because a scenario can be a business analyst is uh, gathering the requirements so it's like something elicitation and collaboration knowledge area but then in the scenario based question then they may have different other statements as well it may happen that this question may be completely from the elicitation and collaboration but then they may tweak it because as a business analyst you are not going to work on only one aspect of business analysis at a point of time, at at a single time it may be you may be working on other things as well so scenario could be first you did the gathering of the requirements but then after that some conflict happened over the requirements what you would be doing so you see here then they did a combination of uh, uh combination of uh, elicitation and collaboration and requirement analysis and design definition you should start thinking which task it this question can belong to and when you have read well all of the elements in in these tasks that is where they form these scenario based questions another tip here is uh, also you should understand that uh, there are techniques which are used in any task and you may find that some of the techniques are used across so many tasks like if i take example of uh, uh, brainstorming brainstorming is one of the technique which is there in baba can be find that this technique is used across many tasks in the knowledge area so the thing here is you should always understand what is the context of using a technique in a task because there is also a place where they may form some scenario that this kind of scenario is there which technique you are going to use of course like so you need to understand well what a particular technique does and in this one uh, where is the uh, allocation you need to have all right so uh, suchitra has a question all right so 17 14 18 18 yeah this this uh, percentage of percentage weightage is incorrect but yeah number of question is correct in this slide so 17 is like 14% 14 will be 12% 18 will be 15% strategy analysis will also be 15% rather than 30 requirement analysis and design definition 36 is like pretty much yeah 32% and 17 as well so yeah this needs correction here 
I hope Suchitra that that answered your question. Uh, Renu has a question. Can, could you please take all the questions in the end? Okay, sure. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. No problem, Renu. But yeah, I think uh, everything is relevant here. So I don't think it's it's breaking my flow. And whenever I find I and I find them relevant even when I'm talking about these points. So still, it's okay. But yeah, that's thanks for sharing that. All right, so next strategy is don't fall into trap. So like I said that don't fall into trap, which means don't try to answer the questions based on your own judgment, right? Uh, because based on your judgment, then you may start thinking, oh, I would have taken this step. If you are not following the BABA, then you may tend to try to answer it based on your own judgment. And that is where one may answer it incorrectly. Then next is uh, also prepare for the numerical questions as well. So there are numerical questions also which could come in your examination and that can be from some of the techniques like financial analysis. It can be from decision analysis as well. So from those techniques, the questions can come. Then prepare for the case study based question as well. So I will also share the, some of the case studies that how it looked like and uh, what all number of questions come into case study, what can be an approach to answer such case study and how you can have access to the case studies as well. Next is what are the do's and don'ts that uh, so I quickly take it over this one as well, uh, starting with the do's. So definitely one of the recommendation is to attend the CBAP training from education and those provider because you get access to someone who already has a lot of experience in this examination who would have already taught a lot of aspirants and would have faced a lot of questions which comes from the aspirants and would have a fair uh, uh, idea of how to approach this book and teach it creating a focused study plan find out how much time you need to dedicate for it some of the folks take uh, this disciplined approach where they study every day for two hours and they have a plan as well that which all knowledge areas they may have to cover on which date which techniques have to be used then familiarize yourself with babok yes understand well what are the knowledge areas prepare for situation based question case study based questions and the numerical questions as well don't don't one of it is like don't directly starting reading pages by pages of the babok that will be really difficult to understand and grasp that what Babok is trying to teach. So when you get the guidance, then, then it really makes sense to understand. And some of the tips and tricks I have already shared in this webinar. When you are answering your uh, questions, don't assume your prior BA experience because you have to answer it according to the Babok's recommendation because that is something which comes from a lot of, say, sign-offs or agreements from many experienced BAs and then only this framework has been built. Uh, there is one more thing. There is a lot of content which is flowing over the internet and you may then don't think like there are dumps which are available for CBAP exam. This is one of the examination for which finding the dumps over the internet is really difficult because they do not simply share the questions which come into the uh, real examination only through the experiences of the applicants who have gone through the exam one could understand that what sort of questions do come into the examination. And sometimes some may go for self-managed learning, try to read the book, but I have seen in some of the instances that one may start reading by themselves and then they may not be able to complete the BABA fully. Because for this examination, it's also required to have the professional development units and that you can get only when you have gone through a training which is from an EEP. So now I will take you through some of the questions as well that how the questions look like in CBAP examination and the type of questions are like situation based questions, case study based questions and numerical questions. All right, so I'll go into Tech Canvas Tech Test Series and share that with you. 
Prior to that, I have a question as well from Shweta. Questionnaires are very long and time consuming. How to prioritize which questions to take first? Okay. Another question she has also most of the question and simulation exams are repetitive. So over time I start passing those questions exams, but does not give me confidence. Um, I don't think like they are quite repetitive. I have seen myself as well. The entire question bank series as well. You can do a lot of combinations as well, like taking different sequences of the questions. But I think like once you start getting more than 90, 95% uh without uh, uh like like having incorrect attempts then i would say that you 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 should be confident but yes when the questions are long as well and time consuming so one of the approach that you can always take is for any question because in your real exam uh, you have 120 questions you navigate through the questions one by one right and so you should not spend a lot of time as well if you are not able to answer any question you can mark it and then keep moving on to the next questions uh, your your uh, goal should be that uh, within one and a half hours you would have seen all of the questions at least and uh, don't spend more than 45 seconds to one minute on any question if you are able to answer it answer it if you feel that you are not confident you can mark it for review and you can always come back on any question and like yeah i was saying that one of the tip is that always look at the question which usually is the last sentence of any question and first read that question uh, look at the options as well which are there and then you approach the rest of the or the initial part of the question because then it gives you an idea or gives you a filter that which statements are required for you to answer this question some of a lot of noise would be there in some of the question giving you a lot of context so you need to have this judgment that what to read what not to read all right let me uh, share the tech canvas series now Uh, Shashank, are you speaking? We lost you, I guess. No, no, no. Can you can you see my screen? I was just about to share yes. this. Uh, you can see it, right? So this is the uh, question bank from Tech Canvas. Uh, going to the my courses. There is CBAP test series. There is a question bank. And for there are warm up questions for the key concepts for each of the knowledge areas and for techniques as well then you can also configure the questions to have the number of questions and how much time you would like to spend on it and then there are a lot of crossword drills and matchmaking as well so that you can remember well the concepts and the facts and then there are case study based questions as well so let me take uh, one of the case study based questions Let's take the first one. All right, so your case study based questions looks like this. Uh, so yeah, in your examination, what you would find that you may have like individual questions and suddenly a case study based question may come and the case study questions based case study based questions may have around five to six questions in a case study and your case study can be a combination of a lot of uh, uh, content some tabular data numbers some of the as is a state and uh, problem statement business requirements problem solving what could what are the expectations from the client there can be some uh, flow diagrams as well so the thing is that if you start reading first the entire case study you may spend a lot of time so the approach is here just understand what are the key uh, headings key sections which are there uh, so there are like introduction productary and details as is forecasting problem statement business requirement 
problem solving, expectations, blueprint. And my recommendation here would be to start first with the question. Read that question first. Because some of the questions may be quite straightforward where they want to test your knowledge that how well you understand in which situation which technique can be used. So like I haven't read the entire case study yet and uh, looking at this uh, question itself that which of the following list technique is best suited for making the reports for the reporting module. So it says making the reports. So there are options like concept modeling, data flow diagram, data modeling, data mining. So data flow diagram is not about the reporting. So one of the answers that you can choose here directly is data mining. And I need not to read the entire case study here as well. So there would be some questions that you can also approach for answering the case study based question. So this is how the case study based questions look like. There are a number of questions and which you, you can also like simply check how well is your understanding on each of the questions. The, uh, the, the question bank also gives you the explanation as well in case if you answer anything incorrect, why particular answer is incorrect. So all such explanations are also there. So this is how like I would like to just share that how the case study based questions look like. There are around uh, 25 case studies, which is quite good when it comes for your preparation. So this is how case study based questions look like. Uh, let me show you some other questions as well, which are like some mix of scenarios, mix of uh, numerical questions as well. In between, there are numerical questions as well in, in this one. So you can also do it in this way where like simply going into requirement analysis and design, def design definition with one of the knowledge area, take the number of questions you want to have, how much time you want to spend. So this is a question, a number of options are there. Uh, one of the technique is like first read what is the question which has been asked. So it says, do you think George is responsible for the design mistakes? Okay, so that's the question. There are options. Then you should go back to the question. So this is how the questions look like for the CBAP. Definitely there are quite long questions as well, which may look quite uh, complex or may have a combination of textual information as well as some models as well. And based on that model, there are the questions which are there in it. So this is how the questions look like. There are numerical questions as well in uh, uh, some of the techniques question as well. Like there are questions which are numerical based questions from uh, financial analysis that is from uh, uh, decision analysis as well. So that is from the exam series as well. There are a lot of questions as well for the preparation as well. There are crossword drills as well, matchmaking drills too. So like how well you understand uh, what is the term for a particular definition and you can attempt it as well. So that is also quite good when it comes for your preparation. Some other techniques that uh, many applicants also follow is like preparation of the flashcards as well. Uh, knowing because in that flashcard you can mention in which situation, which technique you are going to use um, in a particular situation, which kind of stakeholder can be reached out and those kind of things you can also do when, when you are preparing for this examination. So that's from the, the exam bank. Let me go back to the presentation. All right. So now it's time for any questions as well, which you could have, you can share them in the chat and I can answer them. All right, so one question, how do you leverage on 
AAC certification to pass the CBAP certification. Okay, so I think this is you are talking about the Agile certification, right? Which is also from uh, from IIBA Canada. Uh, yes, uh, some of the uh, knowledge could be definitely used here when it comes to knowing well that uh, what are the adaptive approaches, which are different methodologies which are there into Agile and as a business analyst, how do you apply it? So yeah, I would say around 20 to 30% of your learning which you would have got from that certification would be helpful here. And also when you go through that AEC certification, you also learn well that what is the approach that is taken for clearing this exam. So this can be helpful here as well. All right, Suchitra has asked that, can you please help with some sample flashcards? So give me a minute. Let me share some of the flashcards uh, which, which are available online as well. So I'm just pulling up that and so that I can share it with you. So like yeah, quizlet.com is uh, one of the site where you can find um, some of the flashcards which are already there. So let me share how it looks like. So you can find some ready-made flashcards as well, which are prepared by other aspirants or someone else. This is also a way where you can, you can create your own flashcard. This is how it looks like. So that is one of the way of uh, doing that. Uh, you can create your own flashcards as well. Any other questions anyone has? All right, one of the question from Renu. Does on-demand Tech Canvas course help in application filling? What do you mean by on-demand? And then next one is filling the application. On-demand is self-paced. Oh, okay. Uh, well, Renu, uh, if you mean that self pace is where you are doing your own preparation, but but I'm just thinking, how would you get the professional development units? Because that is also one of the requirement for uh, for doing uh, filling your application. And uh, while you fill it into IIBA, then uh, you can do that. Okay, you have shared a link as well. Maybe uh, here I would like to take help from. Rajesh or from Soumya, that how it works. You can answer it better. But yeah, when it comes to filling the application, uh, definitely support is there because how to put the numbers of uh, experience across the knowledge areas is important so that your application get approved. So that is uh, that that is assistance is being provided. Yeah, so I would like to add here. Uh, so Renu, uh, the team is constantly there to support. Uh, you know, whenever, uh, whenever you need it. So uh, we have Brijesh who is constantly there. We have Nazni, the team members. So you can get in touch with them, and you can take any help that you require. Right. Uh, one more thing I would also like to add. So if you can see on the screen, um, you can see the batch details. We also have a batch which will start from 28th of May. So uh, this okay. month, uh, 28th of May also, we have a batch that is going to start. Yeah, you can continue, Shishan. Sure, all right. So one more question was there on the chat. Filling the application forms filling the application forms in IIBA 
in tips to fill the work experience section to get it approved how long does it take to get approved from the moment you start filling it all right so yeah um, on the iibs portal definitely the process is like you have ideally recommended is that uh, you take the membership because that helps you in reduction of the, uh, the fees in terms of exam fee and definitely you get a lot of benefits from iaba so, as well and uh, so the next step after taking the membership and starting the application is filling the application form and paying the application fee as well so once this application is being filled so definitely some assistance is being provided uh, so that one do not uh, fill up the number of uh, number of hours incorrectly and that is also justified with your number of years of experience as well so uh, this may take like around maximum one hour or two hour because yeah as an applicant you know it better that how much time you would have spent on any project because sometimes we also see that many aspirants may have worked on different organizations and yes it may happen that in, in in one organization as well you may have worked on multiple projects so yes your hours may differ and uh, that need of homework or say preparation needs to be done and then uh, this uh, this uh, application process may take like 30 minutes to one hour to fill it up where you fill up your uh, number of hours across uh, knowledge areas you fill up uh, how many hours of professional development units you have where you have like taken a professional training from eep and you may also need to fill your two of the references as well so on an average i have seen it takes like two to three days of time for getting the approval sometimes it's been done earlier as well than this So some more question, does Tech Canvas course cover common formula for numerical and analytical questions? So yeah, in, in the questions, uh, when you see the explanation for the answers for the right questions or incorrect questions, then definitely you can, you can find that uh, what is the formula behind that. And yes, all the formulas are from Babok version three. And in fact, any question also, which you may face in your examination will also be from babak only no, it would not be outside of babak version 3. all right all right so new batch details like one is from 11th june and then somia has also shared another one is also starting from 28th may and you can get in touch with uh, the the contacts that you see here on the slide all right anyone else any any other question you may have All right, we are pretty much on time of this one hour webinar. Uh, thank you everyone for attending this. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Shashank. Uh, this was a very insightful session. Uh, hope to see you on the next webinar. Thank you everyone for joining. Bye-bye. Thank you.